Hi guys, today we'll be studying the chapter 13 capital structure and finance cost. So before watching this video, make sure that you watch the previous videos. If you haven't, check the description box below and uh, watch the previous chapters so that you'll be able to understand this chapter better. Also, in the following videos, we will also be doing the exam kit of all the chapters. So even the playlist for that is given in the description box below. The rules remain the same. Make sure you have a notebook, a pen and a calculator and you are writing along with me and solving the questions also along with me. Otherwise, there is no point of watching this video. I'll try to finish this chapter in one part, but I might make another part. Let's see how it goes. Let's see how much time it takes. Let's not hurry. So this is a chapter which is all about shares and capital structure. Basically, it talks about the capital structure of a business. What do you understand by capital structure? We know that companies and businesses raise money from the public or raise money using various things like shares, debentures, loans from the banks, you know, all of these investors and all of these things. We know that. And we all know what a stock market is. What is a stock market? A stock market is where the shares of various different companies are listed and we can trade in them or invest in them for a long term. Now we are going to study about all these methods and we are going to see the journal entries. Okay. We know what capital is. We have been studying about this throughout the chapter. What is capital? The money which is used by the business to start the business and to like go forward with the business. So capital is used by a company to generate wealth. What does capital do? Capital, by using the capital, we are able to generate income in the business. There are two ways. As we have discussed, there are two ways using which a company can raise capital or raise money. The first thing is the debt. What is a debt? That is basically, we are just talking about loans in general. Any sort of loans, they all come under debt. The second one is equity. When you talk about equity, we're basically talking about shares. Okay, we're talking about shares. Shares and share capital is the same thing. And other reserves. We will be seeing the other reserves. If you can recall, in the previous chapter, we saw something called as the retained earnings as well. So you need to just keep that in your mind. What was retained earnings when you have like profit and you put that profit of this year back into the business and you increase your capital that amount is known as retained earnings okay let's make a note of this first there are various ways using which a business can generate income or can raise money or raise capital so the first one we know is a debt. And what is a debt? Debt is something which is basically, you know, loans and everything like that. And the second way is the equity. What do you mean by equity? By equity, we are basically talking about the share capital and also the other reserves. I hope you're writing this. Now, let's go into the detail of the shares and let's see what are the different kinds of shares do we have. If you can recall, there are two types of shares, right? One is the equity share and the other is the preference share. You remember that? We have two types of shares. One is the equity share and the other is the preference share. Give me a second. Okay. So now tell me, what do you understand by the word preference? Preference means, it's like said in the name itself, that we are going to give these shareholders a benefit, a preference over the other shareholders. In case I have to wind up my business and I need to allocate the money, I would first give the money to the preference shares. And whenever I have a profit and I can, you know, uh, divide this profit among my shareholders, 
I will first give it to the preference share and then whatever is left with me that I will give to the equity shares. So that is what preference shares mean. They have an edge over the other shareholders. They are basically having a, you know, they're preferred. There are two types of preference share. What are they? Let's see that also. The first one is the redeemable, redeemable preference shares and non-redeemable preference share. What do you understand by redeemable and non-redeemable? Think about it for a second. Redeemable and non-redeemable. When you talk about equity, if somebody is giving the company money and is buying a share, the company is not liable to return the money back. Are you understanding my point? A company will not be liable to return back the money back to them. Even It's the same thing with preference share. If you talk about non-redeemable preference share, which means that the shareholder cannot redeem their money back, the company will not be liable to give them their money back. And what does redeemable mean? It means redeemable. The company will be liable to give them the money back if they want it so redeemable preference share is kind of like a loan only because the company has a liability to give them back the money now you must be wondering that if shares when you talk about shares if a company is not liable to pay back you know the shareholders you might be wondering how are people able to buy and sell shares let me clear that one for you so when you're talking about the stock market or any other stock exchange, we are trading shares with one another. We are not trading shares directly with the company. You get my point. You are buying from another person like you and you are selling to another person like you. You are not buying directly from the company. So the company is not liable to pay you back. You get my point. So now we got it what the two types of shares are. The first one is the equity. The second one is the preference. And there are two types of preference shares. The first one is the redeemable wherein the company has a liability to pay back the shareholder. And the non-redeemable means that the company is not liable to pay back the money. So the shareholders will not be able to redeem their capital back. Now what's the difference between equity and, uh, and uh, preference share? Think about it. I told you that preference shares will be given preference. They have fixed dividends. Okay. Preference shares have fixed dividends. Whereas equity shares do not have fixed dividends. First thing is that. Next. When you talk about preference shares, they do not have voting rights. But equity people have voting rights. Okay. I hope you are clear with whatever we have been discussing so far. Okay. Now let's start. All companies have to be financed regardless of the type of company that they are. Without financing of any sort, the business would not be able to begin trading. They would not be able to purchase raw materials, recruit staff, advertise. So for everything a business needs to do, any business, whatever they want to do, they would be requiring capital. So that is what they are discussing. Finance is provided by the capital invested in the business. Capital is something that on its own has little or no use but can be employed in the generation of wealth so if i have a business and i'm using my capital to hire workers to buy a machinery in a way if you think about it i'm utilizing the capital to generate wealth you get my point money is a form of financial capital there is not an awful lot you can do with physical currency except admire the shiny appearance or burn it in its paper sort but it can be used to exchange for goods and services so obviously if you think about it if i just give you a dollar note yes we value it a lot because we know the worth of it and we know the value of it but what happened when we had the demonetization in 2016 do you recall what happened in india the currency notes we valued so much 
became just a piece of paper now so that is what we are saying that to money we give it the value we discussed about this so there is something known as debt debt is nothing but loan and equity is the other thing holder of debt is entitled to some form okay now tell me i'll tell you one thing when you talk about equity owners the shareholders are going to become the owners of the business if i am having a share in this company in a way i am kind of the i have the voting rights i have the voting rights i am kind of the owner but when you talk about debt just because i am taking loan from a bank doesn't mean that the bank is owning my company right so that's one advantage and sometimes a disadvantage that when you raise capital from shareholders they become the part owners but when you you know raise money using debt then the other person who is giving you the debt if he is giving you the loan they do not become the owners of the company okay there are a number of ways that a business can attract financial capital but each has its own characteristics and consequences in general all forms of finance can be loosely categorized into two distinct groups debt which requires some form of mandatory transfer of economic benefit to the provider of the finance so whoever is providing me the finance whoever is giving me the loan if i take a loan from them i need to give them the interest and i need to give them the principal amount back to them so there is a transfer of economic benefit why would a bank be interested to provide you with a home loan the bank is interested because they know that you will be giving interest to them on the loan so that is their motive why they are giving you the loan equity which gives you the provider of the finance the rights which gives the provider of the finance the rights to share in the residual assets of the business when it ceases to trade so i told you that when we are talking about equity they are the part owners of the business which means if in future ever a situation occurs when the business has to be shut down then whatever residual assets will be left or whatever the end assets will be left with the business you need to divide it with the shareholders because they are the owners of the company most forms of finance are simple to categorize but some forms of finance have the characteristics of both and it is not entirely clear whether they are debt equity or both first okay so now there are three things which are there in our syllabus we'll be reading about them the first one is the ordinary share capital what is ordinary share capital we are basically talking about equity share capital so this is equity as the directors are under no obligation to repay the investors or to pay them a dividend so when you're talking about ordinary shareholders what do you understand by ordinary share capital whenever you're talking about ordinary share capital it's ordinary keep this mind keep this word in your mind ordinary which means we do not have the obligation to give them dividends we do not have to give them dividends an ordinary shareholding is evidence of ownership of a company and the shareholders receive the residual interest in the business once it ceases to trade in proportion to the size of their shareholdings ordinary shares are shown under equity in the statement of financial position so we'll be discussing the statement of financial position in the further chapters but it's easy i don't think there's anything to be confused here equity shares come under equity we know that now so in the balance sheet under equity only you will be showing all the shares right so it's that's what is mentioned here and we know that ordinary shareholders are those shareholders and to whom we will not be liable to pay any sort of dividends and i hope you know what dividends are if i buy a share from your company then you will give me dividend for it because you get it it's kind of like the interest only but what interest i receive on shares is called my dividend dividend is just interest only but then when you receive interest on shares you call it dividend directors may choose to pay the shareholders an annual dividend so this is up to the director if they would want to they can provide the 
dividend to the shareholders if they don't want to then they will not so whenever we talk about dividends dividends will be recognized in the statement of changes of equity and not the spl don't worry about this this also we will be discussing in the further chapter and the dividends which will be which we have to give to the shareholders that would be in the statement of changes of equity what is statement of changes of equity that's another financial statement okay so that was all about our ordinary shares now let's talk about what loan notes are loan notes nothing we know it already loan notes are basically just loan they've just added the word note after loan but the meaning of loan note is just a normal loan so the business can take loan and run its business under the terms of loan note agreements directors are usually required to pay the loan holder holder an annual interest income and are obliged to repay a full debt what is interest amount you obviously have to pay interest whenever you take a loan so you have to pay the principal amount as well as the interest amount within a fixed period of time that is what happens when you talk about a loan note this is therefore a form of debt so i told you loans come under debt they're not equity why why is it not equity because just because i'm taking a loan from someone doesn't mean that they are the owners of the company right and what is a debt a loan what is a loan a loan is a liability so we will be showing it on the liability side the interest payment is treated as a finance charge so what is finance charge finance charge what is finance charge if i go to the bank today and if i take um, an education loan of rupees let's say 5 crore and i tell them that i will repay you by the end of the 10 years how much money will i have to pay do you think i'll have to pay just 5 crores no so they will add interests to it let's say they'll whatever interest it will be it will be based on the inflation rate and everything that they will decide and they will tell me let's say i'll have to pay some 7 crores end of 10 years end of 10 years i'll have to pay 7 crore but initially when i took the loan it was only 5 crore so how much extra i'll have to pay 2 crores extra what is this this is my interest payment so all these interest payments they are called as finance charges because i raised finance from someone or somewhere i am having to pay them interest so that is a finance charge to the business it's an expense to the business right interest payment is a finance charge finance finance charge is an expense to the business where are expenses recorded in the statement of pnl and it's a deduction from profit right okay now we have what preference shares are we have already discussed what preference shares are so one thing to keep in mind preference shares can either be debt or equity what do you understand by that take a moment and think about it preference shares are either debt or equity we have already discussed the answer of this i'll, sh I'll give you a little bit of hint if you want okay think about it what did we discuss here there are two types of preference shares the first one is a redeemable one and the second one is a non-redeemable one if what does redeemable mean redeemable means that if they come to me and they say they would like to withdraw their shares then i will be able to give them the money they will be able to redeem their capital back which means it's kind of a liability to me right what do you understand by non-redeemable non-redeemable is just like equity non-redeemable means someone i'm not liable to pay to anybody right so non-redeemable comes under equity but redeemable is a loan to the business right because i'm liable to pay them if they ask so this is kind of a loan to the business so the redeemable one will be shown in the debt side i hope you are understanding the logic instead of just learning the entire thing so when you talk about redeemable preference I hope you are writing this. When you talk about redeemable preference 
shares it's a debt and when you talk about non redeemable preference shares we are talking about equity so we know where to record them this in equity and this in liabilities okay these are shown as liabilities on the statement of financial position and any dividends paid to these shareholders would be treated as finance charges so whenever any sort of dividends are paid they will also be like they would also be said that they are finance charges if i am supposed if the i have raised money using shares which means i would be paying them dividends so if i am paying them dividend it would be a finance charge to my business right it would be my expense but when i am receiving dividends if i have shares of some other company i will be receiving the dividends for in that case it would not be finance charges because that would become my income that is something i am receiving now now let's see what irredeemable preference shares are okay irredeemable that's what we have been discussing so when i talk about non redeemable i mean we are talking about irredeemable only um, okay so non redeemable is nothing but irredeemable preference share these are shares which we so when i talk about non redeemable it is irredeemable it means that they they won't the owners will not be able to redeem their shares okay irredeemable preference shares are the shares that do not have to be repaid they are therefore treated as equity they must be it must be made clear that they are not the same as ordinary shares as they do not as just to say as they do not entitle the owner to a residual interest in the business the accompanying dividends are treated as the same as the ordinary shares okay so when you talk about irredeemable preference shares they do not have the right in the residual assets okay so only the equity people the ordinary equity people they have a what do you say own like interest when the business is about to be you know closed and all during that time they would be able to get the residual interest but then the irredeemable preference share will not be getting any interest okay okay so now we will be discussing in detail about the ordinary share capital and i hope you know what ordinary share capital is we'll be talking about the three okay let's start with the theory don't worry we are coming we are going to start with the journal entries and it's not going to be theoretical anymore these are just the final things okay yeah so let's quickly decide discuss this we have capital we have debt we have equity holder of debt is entitled to some form of mandatory repayment equity holder is entitled to the share of the as residual assets now we know what residual assets is what is residual assets the assets which the business would be left with after winding up what are debts loan notes and redeemable preference shares come under debt what comes under equity share capital ordinary shares and irredeemable preference share come under the share capital and when you're talking about other reserves we talk about retained earnings and revaluation surplus what is revaluation surplus we saw it in the disposal chapter what is revaluation surplus when the value of my asset increases that income is coming in my revaluation surplus what are retained earnings we know that retained earnings what are retained earnings whatever profits i have earned the amount which i put it back into my capital and use it in my business that is known as retained earnings read this okay so i think i'll just keep this video till here i know it's less but i want you guys to understand this chapter really clearly just make sure that you read this entire theory part and keep yourself you know updated about what the terms are being used and in the next video we will be completing the chapter and i'll be starting with this 
and i don't want to do this part over here today because this and the journal entries and everything are linked so i want to do all of it together so i hope you understood this chapter so far and i hope you're making notes so i will link everything in the description box below and we'll also be starting with the kaplan exam kit so make sure to check them out as well thank you